everybody, it's Kids Coding back at again with another banger, and today we are going to be doing if-else statements in Python. Before I start, I want to do two things. First, if you're new, be sure to subscribe to the channel because by subscribing, there will be more coding videos out there for you. Second, if you want to check our full Python plays, you can do it in three ways. First, you can go down in the description below, I will link it there, or you can click on the top right-hand corner right now, or you can go wait till the end of the video and I'll link it there. So. Let me get now get started with if else statements. If else statements really are, so if this happens, then the code will happen. If not, then another code will happen. That's just if else statements. So first, I want to talk about the six different mathematical representations. First is this. This means they are equal to each other. And then we have this. That means they are not equal to each other. And then we have this which is just greater than, and then we have this, which is greater than or equal to, and then we have this, which is less than or equal to, and then we have this, which is less than. So those are the six mathematical representations that we can use in if-else statements. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to make an if statement. This involves using the if keyword. So let's assign a and b as two different values. And let's say if b is greater than a, let's print b is greater than a. What this ends up happening is that now it will just say b is greater than a. So let's say if else so now let's go up and then it's right there but let me just go here copy and paste it just for the demonstration What will happen is that it will print that b is greater than a. So that's pretty much the simplest if statement. Next, we have the elif keyword. The elif keyword is just basically Python's way of saying if the previous condition were not was not true, then try this condition. So let's say elif a equal b and then colon. And let's print A and B are equal. So what will happen now is the fact that it will still say B is greater than A because in this statement it is true that B is greater than A. But if this were not to not be true, then this would then it would say A and B are equal. This is kind of the same thing as the else statement, which is what we'll be covering next. The else keyword just catches anything that's not caught by the preceding conditions. So really it's just if we can keep this and let's let's just say else and then let's print a is greater than b. So what happens is that it will still print b is greater than a because these two are not true. So we can even make an if else statement without using the elif. So we can get rid of the elif and then save it from there. What will happen is that it will say b is greater than a. Always remember to indent because if you don't indent, then it will then you will be expected with an error. We don't want errors. So let's say if we flip the sign. If we flip the sign, what would happen is that it would say it wouldn't really it would say a is greater than b because this is not true. So it would say a is greater than b, or let's just say a is less than b to make it logical and make sense. So we can just say a is less than b. So pretty much what we're doing is that if this statement is true, then we are printing this. In this case, this statement is false. That's why we have else print this. So else is pretty much if the statement is false, then do this instead. That's pretty much how the else keyword works. Next, we can do the shorthand. So what a shorthand if does, it's basically an if statement, 
but it's just one one sentence. So let's say if, or it's only one line of code. So let's say if A is greater than B, yeah, let's say if A is greater than B, then let's print A is greater than B. So what will just happen is that, oh yeah, we have to define A and B. So let's say A is 200 and B is 30. And as you see, it will say A is greater than B. If we flip it, if we flip the sign, nothing's going to happen because A is actually greater than B. It's not less than B. So we can also do a shorthand if else. Same thing kind of works with that. So let's say A is 2, B is 330. Let's print A. So we're basically assigning A as like a variable, I guess. So let's say print A if A is greater than B, else print B. So what this is happening is that it will print B. Because A is not greater than B, it will print it will print the capital B. So like we're basically making this show if this statement is false and this show if this statement is true. So if we were to flip the sign, it will print A because it's true. So that's pretty much how that works. The AND keyword basically combines conditional statements and both statements have to be true. So and basically means both of them have to work. So let's say A is 200, B is 33, and C is 500. And let's say if A is greater than B and C is greater than A, then let's print both conditions are true. So what will happen is that it will print both conditions are true because C is greater than A and A is greater than B. So both of them have to be true in order for it to work. If I were to switch the sign around, it, nothing will happen. So that's pretty much how AND works. The OR keyword works the same way, but either one of them have to be true. So let's say if A is and let's say A is greater than C, and A is greater than B, then let's make that OR. And what will happen is that either condition is true. Because with OR, either one is true. Both of them don't have to be true. Because this one is false and this one is true. So that means either condition is true. So once again, and means both of them have to be true or means either one can be true. Then we have the nested if. What the nested if does is that like, it basically combines several if statements. So let's say x is 41 and if x, is greater than 10, then let's print above 10. And then if x is greater than 20, then print and also above 20. And then let's say else, and let's print, but not above 20. So let's save it and see what happens. I don't know if it works or not. Yep, there's an error for some reason.
Yep, that's why. Okay, so now let me just add a colon here. I think that's what's causing the error. And it says above 10 and also above 30. Because we said x is 41. So x is greater than 10 and x is greater than 20. So lastly, all we have left is the pass keyword. What the pass keyword does is that it avoids you from getting any error. So let's say A is 33 and B is 200. If B is greater than A, then let's say pass. So we don't really have much to say. So like, it, it usually, it's going to give an error. But if we put pass, then it won't give anything at all. Let's try that. Oh, that's why. For some reason, I'm just forgetting to do my colons. So be sure to use the colons. So what happens is that nothing will happen because pass just avoids you from getting the error. So that basically concludes everything. Once again, if you want to check my Python playlist, click the top right. And my HTML videos have been booming, like booming, like a lot. So also click on the top right for that, and they'll both be linked in the description and at the end of the video. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more coding videos.